This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on May the 16th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, uh, Brenda, the reason that we would use uh, Thunderbird Mail is that uh, if you have a, uh, a Hotmail account um, or an Outlook.com uh, account and your Hotmail is going through, through that Outlook account, if you have, uh, if you're using Windows Live Mail to, to, you, to use Outlook.com, if you're telling Windows Live Mail, uh, on your local computer, go out to the internet and get the mail from Outlook. Um, that's going to stop. Um, Microsoft is not going to support that anymore. Is that what I'm doing? Well, uh, if you use Windows Live Mail, I don't think so. I you just on Outlook and goes and it goes straight to my Hotmail. Yeah, uh, and it opens a web page to do it, right? Right, but what I'm saying is when you're looking at your mail, you're looking at, um, you're looking at a web page, um, outlook.com. Yeah, I'm on MSN. Yeah. Yeah. And so you sign in like this if you have to? No, no. No, I MSN as, you know, Skype. Oh, okay. Then you are on a web page. You are on a web page. You just click on Outlook and, and up your mail comes. Okay, you're on a web page. Um, but uh, uh, Windows Live Mail can, is, is a local email client on your computer that can go and look at Outlook.com. But Microsoft is going to end that service. Now, the other, the other reason you would want to do it is if you have a, a, a source cable account and you're using that on uh, Windows Live Mail, Fred can tell you that it doesn't work very well. And there's a lot of other people in the village that have complained about that too, that it doesn't work well. So rather than uh, use Windows Live Mail, I think uh, probably the best thing to do um, would be to go with Thunderbird Mail as, as a mail program on your computer. Um, and so what we want to do is, uh, we're going to uh, click the uh, download button here, free download, and it will start the download and it will throw it into your downloads folder. And uh, we can have a look at that here. I don't think I got rid of it. It should still be there. And there it is there, Thunderbird mail setup. And so you'll double click on that and it will start taking you through the process of setting up your mail. Now, um, when, that's, when the mail is set up, it's going to start asking you, well, how do you want to use Thunderbird Mail? Uh, what, what email services are you using? Um, did I take this off of here? I can't remember whether I did or not. There it is, Thunderbird Desktop. Okay, it's going to open it up. And after you finish downloading it, um, now you want to set up your email services on Thunderbird. And the best way to do that is right here where it says create an account, create a new account. Um, we can look at that and it says, well, do you want to create an account on this Gandhi.net? No, you don't want anything to do with it. What you want to do is skip this and use my existing email account. And when you do that, it opens up this window. 
which is where you will put the information uh, for your email account. The name you want to be uh, known by in the account, your email address, and the password you use. And once you've done that, and you've told remember your password, you hit continue, and Thunderbird Mail is really, really good about going out and querying mail servers and asking the mail server, how do you work? And so it queries its port settings, port 25, port 110. If it's, uh, if it's a secure mail server, then it will be using uh, port 995. The Thunderbird mail will know all about that and it will set up all of the ports uh, to make mail work. You don't have to do it by hand. It, Thunderbird just does it. Boom, it works. And so you can, you can do this for one, two, three, ten email accounts, have them all in Thunderbird. Okay? Um, that is a, Thunderbird mail is the, is the most excellent way of doing this. Now, the other thing that you're going to want to do is if you have addresses that you want to use in Thunderbird mail, then you have to get them out of the place you're using them. In your case, um, in, uh, in Outlook.com, you have to import, you have to export your addresses to a file and import them into Thunderbird. Okay, but we've done, we've gone through that a couple of times. Uh, there are plenty of videos on YouTube to show you how to do it. But I'll just go through the highlights of how you do you do this. Uh, in your case, for Outlook, you uh, you go to your your uh, addresses, and in Outlook there should be a place um, a, a setting to export your addresses. So it's not actually Outlook; it's Yeah, yeah, but it's in it's working in Outlook. Mm -hmm. All right, it's working in Outlook uh, from a web page. Uh, and this, uh, the same thing with any other email client that you have. If you have uh, Windows Live Mail and you want to export the addresses, you would simply go to Windows Live Mail, click on addresses, and under uh, one of the, the uh, menu settings um, for um, the address book, it, you will find export. Now when you click on export, it's going to start walking you through the procedure of exporting your, ad, your, your addresses to a file. The only file that you should be using, the only file type, is a CSV, comma separated value. And it will tell you that, that uh, this, um, this is available to you as a protocol to put the addresses into it. CSV, comma separated value. And that's the one you want to use because all of the mail packages that you do use are, are able to use a comma separated value to import addresses. Okay, so when you get back to Thunderbird Mail and you go to your address book, oops, click on address book, um, it will give you uh, under uh, tools, the option to import your addresses from a file. You've saved that file somewhere on your computer. To make it easy, you should have saved it on your desktop or wherever in downloads or in documents. A, uh, an, a file called addresses.csv. Okay? Um, you go find that file and you import it and all of your addresses that were exported from the old mail package will be imported into your new Thunderbird package. Like I said, there's plenty of, of, uh, um, of videos on YouTube to help you do this. Uh, you would just search for um, import addresses to Thunderbird. And 
there will be plenty of, of uh, videos there to sh walk you through the steps of doing it. Um, okay, so that's, that's pretty much um, Thunderbird Mail. Uh, Thunderbird does all of the things that any other email package would do. Um, and it, you, you, uh, it's good at um, making attachments um, for sending to your friends. Um, it's uh, really good about how it sorts and organizes your mail uh, so you can find things easily. Uh, you, can, you, can make, uh, you, you can make lists in your address book to have uh, a list of people that you send to all the time like I do. So I have a list um, that is just the computer club of all of the addresses I have. I just click on that list and it loads them all into the, ad, into the, uh, into the email I'm, I'm writing. Um, and so that's pretty much what we're looking at today as, as a quick look of what we did last week. Um, there, any other questions about Thunderbird Mail that uh, I don't have to get too deeply into the weeds for? <clears throat> One thing I had, those of us that have sourcecable.net Yes. We can't bridge it into this one. Um, so we maintain that same address? You can. Um, now, the reason that in most cases, I, I, if I've helped you with email in the past, I've gotten you to start using uh, sourcecable.net to log in on a web page and use sourcecable.net web page for email is that uh, Windows Live Mail is not very good with source cable. If you call them up with a problem with Windows Live Mail, they will tell you, well, we'll try and solve your problem, but it may not be solvable because Windows Live Mail is not really compatible with source cable mail. They'll tell you that. That's not really compatible. Uh, Fred's had all kinds of issues with it over the weeks and years, um, and plenty of others have, in the village have had that same problem. So um, that's why I got you going to the web page. The reason being, there are two reasons to go to web mail, to log into sourcecable.net and look at your mail there, uh, is that you can get your mail from anywhere in the world. Okay, if you've got access to a computer anywhere in the world, you can just um, log into sourcecable.net webmail login. Okay, and you can get your mail. The other reason to uh, use sourcecable.net is that when you create an email, if you create it from the website and hit send, the mail will go to whoever you're sending it to. If you are using a local email client like Thunderbird and you have your computer with you in Florida or Europe or Britain or Asia or anywhere and you, you, you're on the hotel's Wi-Fi and you click send, it may not go. There may be a reason why it's not going to go because most internet service providers now don't let just random port 25 emails go through their servers and go through their services. The reason for that is they're trying to stop the spam. Okay, so if, you're, if you send an email from your, lo from your local Thunderbird account and it doesn't go, that's why. You're not on a source cable server. You're on um, um, Patagonia.pa uh, internet server, and that server is going to stop you from using port 25, which is the mail server. It's going to stop you because it's trying to stop the spam that everybody else sends on port 25. So it'll stop you too. But if you're logged into the web page, not a problem. It will send the mail wherever you want it. Um, 
okay, I know that that's it may that may be a little bit over your heads, but uh, that there is a, a two reasons for using um, an internet mail service, uh, especially um, Gmail, uh, Outlook.com, Yahoo Mail, all of the other mail services that are provided by these large companies. Um, they are so much easier to use when you're traveling. Okay, that's pretty much Thunderbird Mail. Um, now, uh, someone else told me that he had a problem. Did you have problems you wanted to talk about? Shall we start with, whoa, you have a pop-up blocker. Where did that come from? Okay, you have a pop-up blocker and where did that come from? All right. Um, I think if you remember back uh, when James was helping uh, with uh, lessons uh, more than a year ago now, we did talk about Ad Blocker Plus. Is that what you have? No, when I play Pogo and you win things, it usually shows you what you win, but now I get a square that says, whoa, you have a pop-up blocker. Oh, okay. It used to be there. Yeah. Um, all right. Now, there is a pop-up blocker in Internet Explorer. And I'm going to open Internet Explorer here. And under Tools, um, you'll see down in, uh, in amongst the tools is a pop-up blocker. Now, that when that's activated, that's what it's trying to do is it's trying to block pop-up ads from third parties. Third parties are anything that's not affiliated with the site that you're on. So um, if you're on Pogo and an ad comes to you from uh, Chrysler Canada, okay, Pogo is allowing the ad to go through its server, but it's not a Pogo ad. Your internet browser knows the difference and it will block that ad from Chrysler Canada through Pogo. Okay, it's called a third-party ad. It blocks them. So that may be why you're getting that notification that a, a, a pop-up was blocked. Uh, if you want to see what is being blocked, you can uh, at, at one, um, you, you should have the option in the blocked pop-up uh, somewhere on the web page to show me this ad once. So you know what it's blocking. It may be blocking something important from Pogo. Yeah, well, I win. I'm not getting it. Yeah, um, well, there should be a place there where it says show me the ad once. And then it will allow the ad to come through the next time you click on whatever it was you clicked on, show me my score. Okay. Um, so that's how that works. In Internet Explorer, there is a pop-up blocker. There's also one in uh, Chrome browser. Uh, there's also one in the Edge browser, but both of them are very difficult to get at. Okay, But when you get a pop-up and a notification either here on the bottom or across the top, you do have the option to allow once. Can you not turn it on or off? Well, it's, te it's telling you, I blocked a pop-up. If you, if you want to see what it was, just click here, allow once. But turning that thing off entirely, no, that's not a good idea. You can't, as a matter of fact, you can't turn off the notification of, I blocked a pop-up. You can't turn it off. But you can ignore it. Okay? It, there's either a little X in the, in the yellow banner, you just close the little X, but I would say um, until you know for sure that um, this has, um, you might need this pop-up because um, it's part of the game, then for a few times just allow once. 
it will it will not after you if you say allow once it will not allow this pop up um, a second time or a third time unless you say allow once. Uh, there is also an option to allow every time. Well, if you do that by mistake, you will not be able to stop that pop up. So be careful about how you think about it. Usually allow once just to see what it is. You should be okay. Well, I get a pop-up almost every time I turn on my computer. <clears throat> it says, do you want to accept this um, uh, <clears throat> AVG or some silly thing? Okay. Or, uh, as a uh, security thing? Um, what? You say, excuse me, it's on the top, they say unknown uh, company or something. Do you? I yeah. Just, just um, <clears throat> what? Um, antivirus service are you using? Do you know? I don't. Okay, because if you have AVG, what it's trying to do is, is update itself. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple of problems with letting AVG update. Um, it's called a nag. It's nagging at you to update, update. But that update is not free. No, I know that's... Yeah, so if it's, if it's saying to you, uh, it's nagging you to buy me, buy me, buy me, just keep closing it. There's nothing you can do about it. Just keep closing it. Um, if you say, if you just once say, okay, yeah, go ahead, it, it, it will load the, uh, the paid version of AVG, and forever there, uh, it will bug you for money and tell you your AVG is not working until you pay. Okay. Yeah, there's another one. There's another one gives you a free service for so many weeks, and then it says, "No, you must subscribe or we're not going to talk." So to speak. Um, it is best just to use Windows Defender. Um, now, this this other service that you're looking at. Uh, that says um, that's telling you it's it's only good for a week or so, and then it's going to stop working. Yeah, is that possibly malware bytes? Mm, I don't think so. I oh, you'd have to tell me what. Write yeah, write it down and tell tell me in a couple of weeks what that problem is. Um, because uh, if it's malware bytes, it's, it's easy to turn it off. Um, some other programs, you may just simply have to unload the program. If it's not a required program, I would say unload it. Um, but as far as EVG goes, it's, it's, trying to, it's not trying to trick you, but it's nagging at you constantly. Buy me, buy me, buy me. Just turn it off. There's no way to turn off that buy me, buy me, buy me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, anything else here? Anybody else with a question, a problem? I, I, I know you've explained this once, but it didn't work for me. What's that? And it's quite simple. I get an email, yeah. say from Fred, and he's, he's attached something from a website. <clears throat> I can't forward that on someone else to share it with and include the website. I have to do something to attach it, maybe, or something like that. Okay. Let's have a look. Now, what you said that you're using um, source, source cable and you're using the web page, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to show you mine here, uh, my Gmail, and it's not exactly the same, but it's roughly the same. Um, now, let's see if I can find here under sent mail. Okay. Okay. Here is uh, last week's video, okay? And so the problem you're having is that you can't 
send, you're saying you can't send this link? Um, well, you should be able in, in this email um, to forward the email. Have you tried that? Now, there should be a way here. In this drop-down box here, right beside the word reply, or you may have to look around on yours to see where it is, but it's there forward okay if I click on forward it what it's done is it's taken the entire email that I had and it's showing um, Everybody that I sent this email to, I would take that out, by the way. That's not something that people should see. I would take it out. Um, but you'll see here that when I scroll down, it's loaded in the links. And if there was a, a, an attached picture, it would just load that in too as a forward saying, Take the entire email, the entire thing, everything that's in it, and forward it to. Okay? And then you would, uh, in, the, in the to line, uh, you put in your address. Okay? Put in your address and, um, or select the address you want it to go to, and that's where it's going to go. Um, you can even, um, in, your, in your case, you should even be able to uh, start typing and it will bring up addresses that you can send to if you, if you know the name. Um, and so I can send it to myself. I can send it back to me. The entire thing. That's a way to test it. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forward is what you want. What was that first little Okay, if we go back to this, let me just uh, go back into this again. Okay. Here is the email I sent out to you, okay, with the links. Um, and um, YouTube does this little link thing here so as a preview to what it is. But um, what you want to do is you want to find in your, in your email settings or your email page, you, you want to find the word forward. And that's what you're doing. You're forwarding the entire message. Now, if you click on reply, okay, you're only replying to me. Because I sent you the email. You're not replying to everybody else I sent it to, just to me. But it, by default, what it will do is it, it will put all of this in the body of the email. Okay, it'll put it all in the body of the email, uh, so that basically I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it may be a month, a month ago and I've forgotten. So if it's there, fine, now I can define what you're talking about. Um, but that's for you, what you want. Usually, uh, the word forward is somewhere around the word reply. If you can find reply, there's, uh, in this case, there's a down arrow. And when I click on the down arrow, I get lots more of things that this window can do. And there's the word forward right there. So that's how that works. Um, the other thing that you can do is that uh, it might be a, a, a little more uh, jerry-rigged, but you can take and you can open this link, 
Okay, so I'm saying open the link and I'm going to open it in a new tab. And what it's doing is it's loading this, this video. Okay, but here's the link right here. Okay, the link I clicked on. Now what you can do is you can go up here and you can click in the address bar and you can copy it. So I just copied the highlighted, uh, the highlighted address in the address bar. Now I can go back to my mail and I can compose a new mail. Okay? And in the body of the email, right here, I can paste that address. There it is. Okay? So it's sending it off to a brand new person. Alright? I'm not forwarding any of the other junk with it. Just what's important. The link. Okay, so copy and paste is a good way to do that. Um, I'm going to close this and now if you right, if you just simply right click on um, a link in an email, if you just simply right click on it, it does give you the option to copy the link address. Okay, so if I did that, I would be able to do the same thing again. Okay, there's always a couple of ways to skin a cat. Always a couple of ways. Um, a lot of times, all it really requires is that you play with it for a bit. Okay, play with it for a bit. And you'll start to discover things um, in these applications that you're trying to use. You're, you'll discover things in the web pages that you're trying to uh, that you're trying to use. Um, just going to get rid of these drafts so I don't discard drafts. Okay, um, you will find a whole bunch of things. Um, that may make your life a little bit easier to use. Um, and for the most part, for the most part, you can't do any damage. If you get down, start to get down a rabbit hole that you're starting to get confused, then close the application and if it asks you to save, you say no. So, Anything that you did, <laughs> you're not saving it, so it should go back to where it started. Okay? It should go back to where it started. Um, that's one of the great things about that. That's why six year olds are so good at this. <laughs> Number one, they're fearless. Number two, they know if it doesn't go well, turn it off. <laughs> Number three, if it still doesn't go well, ask somebody a little older. <laughs> That's why six-year-olds are so good at this. Um, okay, so there's, there's email uh, for you, um, as, you uh, as you use an email, um, an email service like Google, uh, like Yahoo, uh, like any of the number of others Outlook and, and on the list goes. Um, and this, this again, holds true for the, the local services of your internet service provider source cable. Okay? Or Bell if you have it or whatever you have. Um, okay, so let's uh, get out of that and see what other mischief we can get into here. Um, oh, I should tell you, uh, I almost forgot, and I'll tell you this. When you make an address file, um, when, when you export an address file from an email package, and you export it as CSV, 
comma separated value and you put it on your desktop so you can find it. If you have Microsoft Office or you have LibreOffice, you can open that CSV. And if you've done it, and you should do this, if you've done the export correctly, you should see all of your addresses in a row from 1 through 2, if you have 25, 25, or 105, 1 through to 105, listed, every one in a row. If you've only got 2 or 3 out of the 100 you have, you did it wrong. Okay, go back and try again. Because if you try to import it, well, it'll only import 2. Can you choose which ones? Like, I've got about 20. Um, I don't want. Can I leave them behind? No, I would say export everything and import everything and then do the culling after you've you've imported everything that um, from the old package. Cull in the new setup. Because I've been trying and I can't get rid of ones I don't want. Yeah, well if it in the new setup it, it might be easier to to delete them that way. Okay. To to cull um, addresses you don't want. Uh, and it probably will be. Um, okay so uh, Microsoft Excel and uh, and in LibreOffice their Excel their spreadsheet will open a CSV that's what it's supposed to do and you can see how many addresses you have um, but don't make a change to that CSV don't change anything on it just open it and look at it because if you make a change you might mess it up so that it can't be imported Okay, um, for those of you who were not here last week, I'm going to have a quick view, uh, a quick run through of TeamViewer. Uh, TeamViewer is a program that I use at, in my office where I can sit at my desk and if my client has a copy of TeamViewer on their computer, I can see their computer at my desk, just like I was sitting at your house just like I was sitting at your desk, okay? Um, that makes it very easy for me and very easy for you if you've got a small problem that you, uh, that you think um, that uh, a quick fix is all it needs, um, a quick configuration of something, then I can do that from my office. Um, rather than, you know, spend 20 minutes or an hour at your house trying to figure this out. I can do it from my office, not a problem. Um, so we're going to look at um, how to get TeamViewer onto your computer. So here again, open up your favorite uh, browser and type in the word TeamViewer into the search parameter there, into the search bar. And you'll see here that uh, there's an ad for TeamViewer. You can click on the ad if you want, but where you want to get it is from TeamViewer.com. Okay? So if you just click on TeamViewer.com, it will open the TeamViewer web, web page. And as we've told you before, James and I have made a, 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 a big deal of this. If you're getting software, get it from the author's site. Unless you know for sure that uh, the site you're going to for this stuff is going to give you what you're asking for. And the only other site that I recommend for software is Major Geeks. Okay, if you're looking for free software, you can get it from Major Geeks. But if you can, get it from the author's website, in this case TeamViewer. Download TeamViewer, big green button, okay? And so you can go ahead and download it. And in my case, it downloads to my downloads folder. And I have two copies of it here. Do we need this for you to use it? it yes, okay. yeah, okay. And so TeamViewer will uh, set itself up 
Now the only thing you have to remember is that you're, uh, you're using this for personal use. It will ask you, how do you, how do you want to use this? Do you want to use this as an, in a company? Um, ba a basic, basic for personal use. So that's the, in the first line you click off basic, the next line you click off personal use, and you continue loading the, the TeamViewer software. And when it's done, when it's done, when it's done all that stuff, you will be presented with a window that looks like this. It will give you a nine digit number. That nine digit number is yours to keep forever. You don't have to worry about it. Every time you open TeamViewer, there will be your number. That number is being presented to you from a uh, web server in Ireland. Okay? Um, and you're also given a password. When you call me up and you, and you tell me, well, can we do a team viewer to see what's going wrong with my computer? First off, <clears throat> you have to have a good internet connection. If you don't have an internet connection, I can't help you. This works over the internet. But if you've got a good internet connection um, and you just need a little help with configuring something, yeah, we can use this. So you give me this nine digit number and I put it in to my computer at my desk over here. And then I uh, click on connect to partner and it will ask me for this password. Every time you launch TeamViewer, this password will be different. That's a good thing, right? So even if somebody could guess your uh, ID number, they still need a four-digit password to make it work. Okay? It changes every time. That's a good thing. So once that's done and I enter the password, what I see on my desk is your computer. Like I was sitting at your house. The only thing I can't do in this, and I have to get you to do it, is if I need a control alt delete. That's the only thing I can't do. The keyboard will not move a control alt delete command over the internet. I don't know why, but it won't. So I get you to do that. But the only reason I would do control alt delete is to get this task manager. Okay, and if I can right click on, on, your, um, on your task bar, I'm going to get task manager anyway. Okay, so I can open up task manager and I can, from there, I can start and stop programs and all of the rest of it, it to get your computer under control. So that's what I see on my desktop is your computer. So you can go ahead and you can uh, download and install TeamViewer uh, and it's just a nice to have because if you ever need me, you can call me up and say, well, I have TeamViewer, can, can we uh, do a session? Simple, easy, inexpensive because I won't charge you for that unless I have to come to your house. Okay? That's a good reason to have it. I don't have a problem with spending 10 or 15 minutes at my, uh, at my desk trying to help you out. And in 10 minutes I'll know whether I can help you or not. Whether I have to come to your house. Okay, so those two things there. Um, now, one more thing I want to do today, and you can, you can make a note of this um, if you want to. Uh, I have told you in the past, and I don't know how, uh, how many of you have, still have it and still use it, is malware bytes. How many have it and still use it? Just two? Okay. Malware bytes is, is the best program around for getting rid of malware. Uh, the problem is it takes sometimes as much as 45 minutes for it to run. Yeah. It's going through the entire whole computer to run. There is an alternative that works fairly well, especially for a badly infected computer that you're trying to get control of. 
And if you can get a web page open, then uh, the, what you, the place you want to look for, the, there's a program that you can look for. It's called ADW Cleaner. ADW Cleaner from ToolsLib. Okay. ADW Cleaner from ToolsLib. You can go there. And you can also get it from Bleeping Computer. I don't mind you going to Bleeping Computer to get, get something like that. But uh, it's taking you to the author's website, and that's where you want to go. All right. Uh, by the way, I have an ad blocker, ad blocker Plus working on this computer. And uh, it uh, says that it uh, just hid three targeted messages from me. Ain't that nasty? And there is a nice blue button that says download now. And so we click on that. And it's opened up a place where we can download uh, ADW Cleaner. It's going to put it in this PC downloads. That's where it's supposed to go. So let's just say, OK, yeah, let's do that. So it's saving it there, and we can close out of this now and go to our downloads folder. And there it is right there, the last thing that came in, ADW Cleaner. And you can click on this and start it up. It's going to tell you it wants permission. And you have to agree to this. Now, uh, this program is not installing itself. It's a standalone program. Okay? It's not installing onto the computer where it's going to be there forever. It's just a standalone. You can ask. You, I'm sorry, it's the same as Malwarebytes. Now, Malwarebytes is, a, is a, an installed program. Okay? Um, this is a different kind of program. It's called a standalone. And that means that um, one of the good things about a standalone um, malware removal program is that um, some malware infections will stop an anti malware program from running, like malware bytes. Sometimes they will stop it from running. But when you have a standalone program like ADW Cleaner, it doesn't do that. The, the, the malware, it's just, a, just another program. It's just going to let it run as far as it's concerned. So what, once you've got it open, um, you can click on scan, and it will start doing stuff. But it will only do stuff for about five minutes. And it will... Go through your computer, the most likely places for malware infections, and make a list of those malware infections. Um, when it's done, um, the uh, clean button will light up. But before it's done, you can have a look around and see what it's taking out. I'm not going to do this because it's going to take more time than I want for it to take. But uh, you can look around. You can look in the registry, okay? Registry is a place where um, is the place where programs set limits on how they're supposed to run, where they're supposed to run, when they're supposed to run, what they're supposed to look like when they run. And most often, um, a really complex program will have maybe two or three um, folders that it works from. But it will have 50 or 60 registry entries. Okay? We're not supposed to fool around in there, though. This, uh, yeah, I've told you before, don't mess with the registry. Except in this, uh, messing with the registry by going to command line, click on run, or type run, get a run command, click on, re or type in regedit, open the registry editor. Don't do that. <laughs> But all of these removal programs 
they do work with the registry. They do work with the registry when they find values of malware in the registry that are not supposed to be there. And this will give you a, maybe a list of 50 or 60 or a couple of hundred registry values that shouldn't be there. It will remove them. It will also, uh, if there's things uh, messing up your Firefox or your Chrome, it will give you a list of what's there. Okay, and um, and so once you've had a, a quick look around, then you can cl click on the clean button. It will be lit up. It will not be grayed out, and you can go ahead and um, tell the computer to clean what it's uh, what it's found. Uh, this whole procedure should not take any more than five minutes where I said malware bytes can take 40, 45 minutes for a really badly infected computer. We use that, we don't need CCleaner? Um, I would say this is a whole lot better than CCleaner. Okay, um, but now the other thing is, is that um, this version of ADW Cleaner is only good for a few days or a week. It will be updated by uh, Tools Library. And when you go to use it, it will check for an update and say, oh, well, you have to go to the website to get a new update. And in the meantime, it will make this one go away. Okay, so if it needs an update, it will make that go away and take you to the website to get it, to get the new one. Do you remove malware first before you put this in? No, this, this, this is to remove malware. This is, this, that's what it's so for. Malware bytes, I mean, you no, no, you don't remove malware bytes. Uh, this this is um, to get a badly infected computer under control in five minutes. But you don't have to have malware in there first. Do you? No, no, you don't have to have malware bytes in there first. Um, but uh, it's still recommended that you, you have it available to you. Um, like I said, this is to get a badly infected computer under control. Uh, when something is really badly infected. Uh, if it's got a couple, three hundred pieces of malware in it, or entries for malware, it's going to slow it down until it barely runs. And trying to use malware bytes as an installed program and something like that, if it doesn't take 45 minutes, it's going to take all day. Okay, because the computer is running so slowly. This is a quick way to get your computer under control. And it's not going to do any harm. Okay, it's not going to do any harm. So that's why I like uh, ADW Cleaner. Um, I guess from time to time you could go in and, and use ADW Cleaner. I would say, say rather than use ADW Cleaner to um, as uh, as a pro proactive tool, I would say malware bytes is what you want to use as a proactive tool because it gets everything. Okay, ADW Cleaner gets most of the bad, the worst stuff. So now when it's done and it's rebo rebooted, you've got a computer that will run good enough to run malware bytes and get you out of a, uh, a junky situation in a half an hour instead of all day. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're still on Windows 7, uh, you can run these uh, in safe mode. Okay. A lot of times you can't run these programs in safe mode, but ADW Cleaner you can. Which is, you know, to my way of thinking, probably the better way to do it. It's probably the better way to do it. Because if malware, if malware is not loaded and running in safe mode, it's much easier for any malware removal program to get rid of it if it's not loaded and running. And in safe mode, most of this junk is not going to be loaded and running. Okay, I think that's it. We've pretty much uh, beat up the day. Um, so I will get this off to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much everybody for coming. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Oh, and uh, next Monday we are off. That's the holiday. Our last session will be the last Monday of the month. Um, the 30th, whatever that is. 
and then we'll be off until uh, probably the second, third week of September. I'd have to have a look at it, see where it falls. You got it there, Fred? Yeah, I got it. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.